What is up people of YouTube? I'm your host Vernon. This is Lake Mead. Let's fish that. Okay, so by the way that I'm dressed, you can probably figure out that it's quite cold out here. Reason being, we're heading into winter. We have to shift our focus to stuff like stripers and, of course, some trout. Now, the trout in our ponds only get stocked once the water temperatures reach a certain level. Uh, as soon as that happens, they will stock some trout. Down in the video description, I will put a link to a website that will show stocking reports. If you want to keep an eye out on that for when they actually stock the trout. Uh, but until then, I'm out here to do some striper fishing. Now in this video, I want to focus on uh, some cool tips and hints that I want to give you guys for catching some stripers, especially during early winter, as I have a lot of new followers asking lots of different questions. And I also want to use this video to answer some of the questions that I keep receiving either from people directly or via the comments. Okay, so in Lake Mead you will find some small 5 inch little striped bass uh, during early winter. There are quite a lot of them in these waters. And of course you will find the average striper something like 1 to 2 pounds. And then there are of course the bigger ones, some 10 pound to 20 pound stripers out there. It can be quite difficult to find these bigger fish, uh, especially for us bank anglers. But as the winter progresses these fish will come in shallower. Um, at the moment, however, you are going to struggle to find some bigger fish as all these coves are kind of filled with the small little 5 inch bass. But I wanted to show you what I use to catch these small little stripers and how I rig my stuff and give some hints and tips along the way. But first off, let's talk about this comment I got. So one comment I quite regularly get is something like, we cannot find the exact location or spot that you were fishing in. Okay, so you need to understand that I'm showing you these spots, uh, not necessarily that they are good spots or honey holes, I don't know where those are, uh, but I'm showing you these spots. Now I get that I caught a fish there, so maybe you can catch a fish there as well, so I get why you're looking for these spots, but there is something important you need to understand about. So this video is my most watched video on my channel, the little hole 33 one. That video was actually filmed right back down here on the top of this little hill we have here. That was actually where I was standing on top of that hill when filming that video. And that is actually how much water level has dropped. That's the difference between spring and fall in how much water there is. So if you're looking for that particular spot, you're probably gonna be fishing on some dry land when trying to do the same as I did way back in spring. More often than not, the exact spot that I was fishing is no longer accessible. Either it's underwater or it's way above water. Okay, so here's what I'm using today. I have my two setups out there. One is my normal striper setup, the one I'm trying to catch some of the two pounders or some of the bigger stripers. And the other is my smaller setup for catching these small little stripers. So I quickly want to show you guys what it is that I'm working with. Okay, so on my normal setup that I normally try to catch stripers on, I have a little Carolina rig with a size one. This is a sturdy big hook for catching bigger fish. Quite an easy setup to use. And I'm gonna bait this with my anchovy. Now you can use an entire anchovy like this. You will catch fish like that, uh, but you're gonna have lots of fish nibbling on your baits. Uh, only the big ones will take the entire fish. Uh, the best idea would be to cut this down to size so this actually matches the size of the bait fish that are out in these waters. So I'm cutting this little anchovy so we get some smelly insides as well but still have the entire head. This will still look presentable as a fish in the water so the fish are still willing to go for this. Okay so I'm baiting my little anchovy through the head. Uh, these fish are quite soft and squishy but by going through the gills you actually have a better chance of your fish head staying on your hook and of course you want your hook exposed make sure you don't have any scales or anything on your hook and then you can just cast your little anchovy head out there 
Now with my bigger bait out there, you'll see that I get little hits on the bell that's telling me that there are small fish out there nibbling on my baits. No big fish around the area at the moment. So it's a good idea to then scale down the size of your hooks and your baits to try and catch these fish. Okay, so a lot of the guys tend to use the rest of the anchovy after taking off the head, cutting that into pieces and chumming the water. But before you chum the waters, hang on a bit because these little pieces of anchovies are the perfect size to use to get some of these smaller stripers. So on my second rod here, I have the same Carolina rig set up, but I have a lot smaller hook. This is very important when trying to catch the smaller fish. You need a smaller hook and you need a piece of bait that is small enough to fit inside the fish's mouth. When trying to bait these small baits, they tend to fall apart rather easy. You want to go through the skin and try getting the skin hooked. Uh, that way the bait just kind of stays a bit better together. And there we are guys, first fish for the day. Okay, so let me quickly show you guys a demonstration of what it is I'm doing. I'm taking my small cube of anchovy. Threading that onto the hook. Okay, so we got our bait on there. I'm gonna cast it out there. But these small stripers are quite ferocious. Uh, you cast out and they will immediately go for your baits. So you don't have to put your rod down. You can actually stand with your rod and you'll immediately start feeling some bites. Okay, so we just cast it out there. And there we are guys, our tiny little stripers. Alright guys, and that's the easy way to catch these small little stripers we got out here. A lot easier catching these than the big ones at the moment. But if you keep at it, at some stage these guys will even get bigger and the fish you catch will get bigger. Now another question I quite regularly get, how do you handle the fish? Now you would see I have this little one lip gripped. I like using the little lip grips, uh, but the general idea is you don't want to really be touching the fish. We humans are quite dirty. The oil on our hands and on our skin uh, actually damages the silk layer on the, these fish and it's quite easier for them to get little abscesses or uh, grow little bumps and stuff like that or bacteria can affect these fish. So touching fish is not a great idea. And that is why I would suggest using something like lip grips. Um, all kinds of bass, big mouths, it's easier to get your thumb and stuff in there. Uh, but you don't want to be grabbing all sorts of fish because some fish actually have teeth. So make sure uh, the fish that you are grabbing don't have teeth in there. But let's quickly get this guy back into the water. Okay, so like I said, most fish, you can actually grab them in the mouth. 
and do this with large mouth bass, small mouth bass, striped bass, stuff like that. Um, catfish tend to have small little teeth on the inside. If you grab catfish, they can actually damage your skin, but it's not big teeth that will cut you open and stuff like that, so it's not that bad. Stuff like pike and tigerfish, they actually have big teeth. They can actually take off quite a chunk of flesh, so I would not suggest grabbing those. And of course, the bigger the fish, uh, the better it is to support the weight of the fish. You're taking it out of the water, so you're taking it out of its habitat. So you need to support the entire weight of that fish. That is why I normally grab fish like this, where you support the back and in the front. Uh, stuff like carp and sucker fish. Uh, you don't want to be grabbing them in the mouth. Their mouths can actually tear out. So do not grab them like that. You can rather grab them one hand in the back, one hand in the front. Okay, so from time to time you are going to be touching the fish because you actually want to take some photos with them. Uh, I tend to make the fish the star of the show. Uh, I take photos of the fish, uh, grabbing it by the lip or something and taking a picture of the fish. But if you want to be in the picture with the fish, I would suggest holding it up in front of you. Most often you will see on my clothes I have these little marks of where I pushed the little fish against my body. Uh, that is actually the incorrect way of doing it. The correct way of doing it would be to, to turn your hand around, displaying the fish, because you don't want parts of the fish covered by you or any obstructions. Okay, so these are just some of the things that I've had some questions about on how do you display the fish or how do you handle the fish and stuff like that. And I just wanted to put that in there to explain to you guys how to handle these fish. I know it seems like a strange idea, but lots of people are new to fishing and they don't know these things. That is why I'm telling you guys this now. All right, guys, uh, this was quite a fun day out here. Uh, I'm not going to show you all the fish, but I caught 22 of these small little stripers out there. So with this first cold front coming through and temperatures dropping, this is quite an exciting time out there to do some fishing. I doubt that you'll be able to see it on the camera, but way out there, we have lots of bird activity, birds diving into the water. Um, we have lots of bait balls all around, lots of action in the water. But fishing in these times can be rather difficult. Some days it will seem like the moon and the stars all align and you will catch loads of fish out there. Other days it's going to be slow. You have to downscale your tackle and be happy with catching some small fish at least but you can still catch fish out there this time of year. So of course, later in winter is going to be better fishing for stripers. Uh, all the other fish like uh, the largemouth bass, they tend to go into deeper waters and it's a lot harder for us bank anglers to find them. But like I said, the point of this video was to show you that you can still catch fish out there and show you small hooks, small baits, how to do it and how to catch the fish. So you can get out there and catch them yourself. So this was not the most exciting video, but I want to thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, please do hit the subscribe button, join my community. Feel free to ask any questions down below in the comments or just say hi or something down there. And please do give me a thumbs up if you liked this little video. The more likes we get, the more YouTube will show this video to other people to see as well. Okay, so that's going to be this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.